Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, in today's video, I, I wanted to do something a little different uh, and go from code back to model, and specifically with the batch example in our latest book, because, uh, you know, process modeling and development is a science, it's art. Um, it's iterative. And do you always get it right the first time? Chances are uh, you don't which is okay. And just like writing a book or developing code, uh, we noticed uh, an error. And I thought this would be a great example of taking the code and actually working back to say, how do I take code um, and design a process model? And there's many reasons why, you know, you could have legacy code, you become an, you could come into a project and there's um, no process models, but there's code for an application or GitHub or repo, and you wanna understand what the process is because there may be manual steps before or after. Um, but I thought I would show some of my techniques of looking at the code and actually uh, building a process model. And in this case, we'll just update the process model because um, there was a, a, a minor error uh, in our going from process model to the code. And so on the screen here, I have the, um, our GitHub for and TerraTech for the uh, rescaling example in the book. And, um, you know, one of the things that I like to look for is, you know, the, the structure of the code to identify possible tasks or task types. You know, usually a quick scan, um, you know, in this case, the, the fact that they're, we're doing a bunch of um, rescaling, um, or batch processing for rescaling was the was a key giveaway for me on like the script task type, um, but other things like the exception flows uh, or the exception um, in the code um, gives me kind of that uh, alignment to exception flows in business process modeling, as well as if there are like if I was to use any like APIs calls and um, any types of um, you know of email servers or sending messages you know there'd be things that I would look for for the task type but fundamentally I, I have I identify some exception flows as I look at the code um, with the try and accept down below uh, which was you know brings me to the the main error um, right so our first two activities for me was pretty you know within the class rescale the uh, you know this was pretty straightforward into that initiation initialization as well as the um, define um, you know rescale images uh, our second activity here um, but what I noticed uh, when reviewing the process model in the code was that I actually applied the boundary event here but Wes went and coded the error event uh, to the boundary of the activity on the third activity which was define rescale image and actually after talking with him, it made more sense to have the exception flow because for the, the, the that uh, batch activity, the first one, um, it's really about bringing in all of them and rescaling them. It's not until you do it individually in which you would normally see the um, error message or the exception flow. And so on the screen, I'll, I'll jump to that the, the code, but essentially the try and accept uh, this part of the code, when I went to model it, I had actually, uh, he went and coded it to the next activity uh, based on his experience as a developer. Uh, so the rescale image, the different um, error types, you know, that we brought over for this model, uh, you know, it makes sense because each photo could have, you know, something with the file not being found. Uh, there could be a value error or a type error you know, not all of the photos when you do that batch processing, that first, the, the first two activities may not necessarily catch, you know, you, you may not want to be able to do that or see that. So I'll just scroll down um, to the last bit. Again, th th this was actually correct from model to code in which we do our save of the image um, and our output file here. And then we have, again, an exception flow. So when I we go to try to save it, if there's a value or an OS error message, um, uh, we'll have that boundary event that uh, pushes the, the flow to our end event um, in which we, um, there's an, on the front end side of the application, you're gonna see the, the error message. 
So if I go back, you'll see that um, there was no changes with the save file. So there you have it. Um, a simple way to look at code and in this case, fix a model um, and or how you could build a model um, from code. Uh, so thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our latest book, Learning BPMN 2.0, the second edition. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.